The M&A Advisor is pleased to be joined now by Jane Rosefield, partner with Brunswick Group. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Talk to us a little bit about the Brunswick Group. Sure. Uh, Brunswick Group is a global corporate communications advisory firm. We have 23 offices in 14 countries and we advise our clients on a range of critical communications issues and strategies with our heritage rooted in M&A advisory. And tell us about how you came across Winchester Capital. Sure. Well, my, I mean, my personal experience is um, I've spent my career going back and forth between the UK and the US, and so I've grown to know them through that and their expertise in transatlantic um, M&A. Long history, Winchester Indeed. Capital. <laughs> Absolutely. Well-respected company. Absolutely. And we both worked, I, I personally worked on the Kraft acquisition of Cadbury in 2010, and I know Winchester has worked extensively with Cadbury, so also got to know them through that. Let's talk a little about regulations between the U.S. and the U.K. Sure. How do you advise uh, corporations and what do they need to know as far as regulatory between uh, uh, both directions, really. Absolutely. Well, I think that's one of the key considerations or the real key differences between our markets. A lot of the time people think UK, US, uh, two companies separated by a common language. And one of the things that we try to help our companies break down is those differences in language, um, both specifically on the language front, but also some of the knock-on effects on the regulatory side of things, the media landscape, and the differences that they should expect in going into the UK as a market. From the regulatory perspective, um, following Kraft's ac acquisition of Cadbury, there were a number of changes made to the takeover panel code that make it quite difficult for US or foreign companies trying to buy a UK target. Um, and I think at that time we saw a real increase in sort of a form of nationalism or even protectionism in the UK where Kraft was referred to as Viking invaders trying to rape and pillage oh the UK. God. So some of those kinds of considerations in helping companies really navigate that landscape. Yeah, let's talk about that navigation a little bit. How does Brunswick actually advise companies in these transatlantic deals, uh, particularly the American companies going into the UK? Yeah, well, one of the things we've, we, you know, we work very closely with bankers and lawyers to mm -hmm. start with. So obviously at core is the valuation messaging for any deal. And then what we work with our companies to do is to actually say, well, who are the other vested stakeholders in any transaction? Because you can't just sell this deal to shareholders. You need to look at the political climate, you need to look at the regulatory environment, unions, and especially in the UK, unions can have a real driving effect on the success or failure of any deal, and thinking about employees and the cultural differences that you're going to come across. So whether it's making sure that um, US executives are sensitive to that, that they can communicate the respect for the heritage of that company, and also demonstrate commitment to investing in the UK rather than letting sort of a mass hysteria feel that it's actually going to be outsourcing jobs and sort of annexing. UK PLC, as it were, rather than the company itself. The savvy companies know a lot of this, but what would you say, uh, are there many inexperienced companies out there that don't go in with this knowledge? Absolutely, and I think I wouldn't underestimate even the savvy companies. Takeover panel code is incredibly complex. I would say that a lot of people, even in the UK, have no idea what, you know, really how to navigate that, so we help with that. Even things like the UK media, totally different to the US media, both in terms of you know, how prolific they are, the number of national papers versus the US, um, and also how sensationalized and personal it can become. In the case of Kraft's acquisition of Cadbury, you know, we had one example where uh, a UK tabloid paper actually flew to Chicago and doorstepped the rabbi of the CEO of Kraft. Mm -hmm. So things like that that you might not expect, and how do you prepare executives for that kind of campaign and, and, and the vitriol that can come as a result of that and the success or failure of a deal can really come down to this. Absolutely, and there's a, there's a real sense in the UK as well of wanting to see the whites of their eyes. So deals can't be done from afar. We always talk about how close our two nations are, but really can't underestimate that idea of boots on the ground and making sure that you're really taking that personal touch and outreach to politicians, to regulators, to the unions, to the employees, so that they're understanding your commitment to the go-forward company and not just a sense that you're going to try and annex them to the U.S. Shane, you've given us tremendous insight. Thank you so much. Thank for you very being much for having today. me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.